Okay. So how do we learn anything is my question to you. Okay. How do I learn anything? How, how do I learn cricket? How do I learn football? How do I learn anything? The question is to you. That's a question to you. And, and ask yourself that question. How did I learn guitar? How did I learn language? How did I learn? How do I learn? Uh, a lot of NLP is based on learning. You can learn and that learning, it's a, it's a learning tool. It's a learning tool to understand how do I learn? What do I learn? Now, when I say learn, I'm talking about installing a new behavior within you. That's learning, right? I didn't know Hindi. I learned Hindi. Now I have a new behavior in me. I can talk in Hindi. I can read in Hindi. I can think in Hindi, etc. I didn't have a traumatic experience. I learned something. Something happened in my life. An impact happened in my life. And with that impact, now I have a new behavioral response, which is traumatic behavioral response. Could be addiction, could be grief, could be loss, something. How did you learn swimming? I didn't know swimming three years ago, but today I know swimming. How did I install the software in me? The question is about learning. And we are learning and NLP is the study on how we learn. How we learn anything, swimming, trauma, fear, happiness, success, failure, all of that. How do we learn that? That's the study of neurolinguistics. Is that clear? Is the premise clear? Now the question is, do you want to learn something? And what do you want to learn? Do you want to learn implicit parameters? explicit parameters, behaviors, or skills. And I'm going to give you examples of all four. What are we learning? We can learn implicits, which means I want to learn how to be happy inside. I want to learn how to smile. Give me PIP. How to smile. I want to learn how to smile. I want to learn how to be okay inside. It's an implicit parameter. It's an internal component. I want to learn an external component, explicit how to wear a green shirt. I'm not confident wearing fluorescent trousers. I'm not confident wearing jeans. Uh, my mother says, I, I'm not confident wearing a salwar kameez. She's worn sari all her life. How do you learn something explicit? I, I have difficulty in coloring my hair. The question is not whether you, uh, the question is whether you want it. If yes, then how, right? That's the, that's the whole parameter. Now, that's explicit. Then there's a behavior. There's a behavior. I want to be able to stand in public and talk. That's a behavior. I want to be able to raise my hand whenever I have a question. That's a behavior. The question is, how do I learn a behavior? And then comes, um, say, 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 I want to run. I want to yell. The question is, the next is, how do I learn a skill? Swimming, guitar. Any of these things are skills. So how do I learn a skill? If you want to learn anything, if you want to learn anything, then the way you learn is the study. And that study is categorized as neurolinguistics. Neuro, your neurons, your neurology, your nervous system. You are learning through language. So neurolinguistics. If you didn't have language, you can't learn anything. You're thinking in language, you're talking in language, you're feeling in language. If you eliminate language, you don't exist. You don't exist in the cognition. You don't exist in the limbic system. You don't exist in language. You don't exist anywhere if you remove language. So neurolinguistics and then programming. How are you programmed? How are you conditioned? Then can we change that condition? Can we change that programming? The answer is yes, we can. The question is how do we do it? Am I clear so far? Am I clear so far? Well, so NLP is a learning tool and we use it in different areas. If I'm using it in business, then well, we will say, I want to learn how to make more money. I want to learn how to pick the right stocks. I want to learn how to exit stocks. 
I want to learn how to coach somebody. I want to learn how to deal with anger. I want to learn. And then we come into the emotional aspect. I want to learn how to build better relations. I want to learn how to say no to my father. I want to learn how to say yes to something that's coming to me. So we move from business to we move to relations. And then we come to therapy. How do I learn how to change the traumatic response? How do I learn how to change my addiction? How do I learn how to change my compulsive behaviors? How do I learn how to change a behavior, the phobia, the illusions, the fear, the hallucinations? You know, how do I learn grief? How do I learn to resolve my unfinished business? So did you get the spectrum over here? From right on the outside to right on the inside, the spectrum changes and it goes from the outside of you to right at the center of you. At the center of you exists your, your core responses. I'm smoking because I'm smoking somebody's words. I'm smoking somebody's thoughts. I'm smoking somebody's responses. I'm overeating. I'm overeating my fear. I'm overeating a response. Do you get that? Uh, compulsions, illusions, delusions, and all of that. Am I clear? And then you come out, maybe here, there is a relationship. This is the core. Here, we have the relationships. And here, we have the external parameters, which could be business, which could be uh, any of those aspects. Yeah, we say, well, uh, I need to take loan to build a business. I need to take uh, something else. I want to start a new organization. That's external. I want to build relation with Meghna. I want to build relation with Anjan. I want to build relation with Madhu. That's a relation. And then comes core. When I'm all by myself, I have a behavior. I'm plucking my hair all the time. I'm overeating and so on and so forth. So all of this is a behavior, right? Everything is a behavior. And behaviors are of two types, implicit and explicit. And if you want to learn something, there are only two ways of learning it. One is you can learn with me or you can learn through me. There isn't a third way to learn anything. We all have always learned with people or we learn through people. Let that settle in. That's the only two ways of learning anything. You can learn with me. You can learn through me. You can come and ask me, hey, Anil, what is um, social media marketing? And I'll say, hey, I don't know, but I can share some links to you. And I share some links to you. I share some videos to you and you'll go through it and you will say, I think I got it. Great. You learned with me. And let's say you say, I, that was jack shit, Anil. That was horrible what you sent me. Great. You did not learn with me. Excellent. But we have a feedback over here. What is learning through me? Let's say I'm an excellent social media marketeer. Let's say I'm excellent at it. I, I put a post and I get like 35,000 likes. I don't even get 35, just FYI. Say I'm getting 35,000 likes. Okay. If there is a therapist over here, you may wonder, why did Anil really focus on he didn't get 35 likes also? Is there a pain there? You know. Well, that's searching problem and going back. We'll talk about that before we end. And it's one of my favorite topics to talk. <laughs> but is that clear so far? Okay. So let's say I put something and it gets viral. If I put something, it there's traction. And you come to me and you're my friend or whoever. And you see what I'm doing. And you're learning from me. And you, you're following my structures. You, you, you're learning my pose. You're learning my style. And you're duplicating that. And as you duplicate that, you realize that you're getting a similar outcome as what I'm getting. You're learning through me, you're unconsciously assimilating information without my knowledge. That's where network helps our net worth. So is that parameter clear? Are you clear with that? There are two ways of learning. You learn through, you learn with. Now I have a question to each of you. Okay. My first question, pick out a behavior in you, which is very prominent. Um, I'm not asking you good behavior or bad behavior, but pick out a behavior in you, which is very, very prominent. And I'll give you examples. You can say, well, I overeat at night. It's a behavior very prominent to you. You can say, well, um, 
I get angry very fast. You can say, well, that's a behavior prominent to you. So what is the behavior very prominent to you? Hey, everybody else, are you there? Just put your cameras on, guys. Just breathe and nig in and come on, let me see you. Thank you for honoring that statement. Himanshu and thank you, man. Really thank you. Appreciate that. Yes, tell me. Yeah. Thank you, Afreen. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did you pick it up? Did you pick it up? Do you know a behavior of yours? Let's say you can say, well, I, I, I normally pull the sleeves of my shirt like this. And I do that. Okay. So, so that's a behavior very prominent to me. Maybe I, I put this specs. And you can, you can take just a normal behavior. When I was asked this question, when I was doing my neurolinguistics, I very quickly picked up a behavior where I say, well, I put my specs up with this hand. And then Dick, my teacher asked me, where did you learn this behavior from? And instantly my cognition was, I don't know, it's just mine, I just do it. And he says, okay, pause and slow down and ask yourself, where did you learn that behavior? And that's when I recollected that while I was in 11th, my core group had a friend of mine and she, would all, she, she was like a scholar kind of person. Even if she had to tear a paper and throw, we would dive and catch the paper and get it. You know, she was someone like that academically. So she would have this behavior. And I had no clue when I picked it up. So we unconsciously model behaviors. My question to you would be, can you identify a behavior that you have, which you can understand it was of somebody else? And now my question is, how did you model through them or with them? Do you get the difference? Okay. Okay. Good. That's good realization. That's how you learn. Now pick out a behavior which you're not happy with. Pick out a behavior that you're not happy with. And you could say, well, smoking. You could say, well, I, I just lose my shit all the time. You can just pick up a behavior that you're not happy with. Yeah, grumbling. Yeah, yeah. I have a question for you. There are two ways of dealing with every problem, right? That's what neurolinguistics brings into. I started binge watching. Sumati, uh, if you find a solution, just let me know. I think we've we, we got two clients over here now. <laughs> I have been watching nearly three episodes of uh, Grey's Anatomy. I think I didn't watch it in 25, two, 2005. <laughs> Anyways. Um, well, there are two ways of dealing with the situation. One, I find out what the problem is in the now and I, and I install a new behavior. How much time does it take to install a new behavior? Under 20 minutes. Any behavior can be installed in under 20 minutes. Any behavior. The only resistance that the client brings is their own model, is their own limitation, is their own understanding. Well, any behavior, if any behavior can be learned under 20 minutes, because you have learned the unwanted behavior also in under 20 minutes, right? Ask yourself, whoever says grumbling, overeating, um, you know, being grumpy, being angry, whatever that behavior is, the unwanted behavior, how much time did it take for you to learn that behavior? The impact happens in no time. Or did the impact take time to happen? Why, did you install phobia over a period of 10 months? Or did you install phobia overnight? Did that breakup happen over a period of time or did it happen on an impact? Your behavior unwanted, did you, did, you, did you install it in no time or some time? And if we are capable of putting in a behavior, then we are also capable in putting in a behavior that we choose. So what is the opposite of smoking for you that you want to replace smoking with? What is the opposite of overeating that you want to replace with? What is the opposite of anything that you want? Now, the opposite of smoking is not not smoking. Maybe Sheher says, Seher, right? Seher Jane. 
Maybe Seher says, opposite of smoking for me is swimming. Great. Maybe Sangreela says, opposite of getting angry is reading a book. So we are identifying a behavior that you don't want and replacing it with a behavior that you want and they are not polar opposites. You get this? And all of NLP is just that. All of NLP is installing a new behavior at an unconscious level so that what we saved can be replaced. The trigger can be eliminated. The trigger can be eliminated. Am I clear so far? Am I clear so far? Just give me a thumbs up or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now, well, the moment I see a behavior in somebody, the moment I see a behavior in somebody, and if it's a good behavior, I can feel bad. I can feel jealous. I can feel horrible because I don't have it. Or I can say, wow, I can stay in awe. I can stay in wonderment. And these are the two expressions we normally would have, right? When there is a good behavior. Let's say somebody reads more books than you and you will say, oh, damn it, I wish I could read. Or you will say, wow, you read great books. You know, they're two different expressions. But there is an expression in between which says, well, that's a behavior I want and I can take it in. That's the behavior I want and I can take it in. Before choice comes awareness. The structure of NLP is very simple. Yes, you can learn, but learning comes with a choice. But before choice comes awareness. And with awareness comes acceptance and allowance. And with awareness comes acceptance and allowance. Are you aware that you're biting your cuticle all the time? And the client says, oh my God, really? I didn't even realize I'm doing it. Good. You know, are you aware that you are harming yourself by doing something? And the client says, wow, I didn't even realize that. Awareness. And with awareness, you can also bring in, if it is not awareness, then it is attention. And attention brings in fight. Awareness brings in choice of possibilities. Attention is a cognitive word. Awareness is all-encompassing. Awareness has acceptance. It has allowance. Whereas attention can bring in fight. If you do not have the choice, you cannot bring the change. If you don't have the choice, you cannot bring the change. You may have the choice. You want to bring the change. Now you don't have the tools. NLP is a set of tools that will help you learn any behavior. NLP is the study of human excellence. Even if you are angry, crying, and breaking things, that's also human excellence. Just on the other side of the barometer of the Cartesian coordinate system. It's plus five and it's minus five. The guy is happy, calm, and Dalai Lama. Well, the guy is bursting nuclear bomb and he's Hitler. They both have excellence. They both have excellence. Imagine a man who could stand and convince an entire nation has got skills. What would you do with those skills? How could you get that voice modulation? How could you get the choice of words? That's a skill. There is a behavior. And how do you learn that? How do you learn anything? How do you learn anything? And how do you put that learning to practice? Am I clear? So when the client comes, the client brings a problem state. Now understand and recognize the problem. The problem can be in belief. The problem, the problem is always in belief. I believe this is true. Now this belief can be on capability, that I believe I can't sing. The belief can be on the environment. I believe in India, we don't have this facility. This belief can be at different levels. 
as therapists, as practitioners, as mental health enthusiasts, our job is to find out what is the belief, where is it, and what do we want instead of that? What is the cannot statement that you have in your life? I cannot. What is the I cannot statement in your life? Which you want to, but you cannot. Like, of course, you can say I cannot fly. But do you want to fly? Not really, right? So take a genuine I cannot statement. What's the I cannot statement? I cannot have sex with her, for example. Um, or I cannot start my own business. Okay, what's the I cannot statement? I cannot leave smoking. What is your I cannot statement? I cannot drive. Lena. Lena Chala. I cannot drive. Come up on screen. Lena Chala. Kidaro. Kaha ho tum. Hanji. I cannot drive. I'm asking you, how do you know you cannot drive? There's instant fear in me. I've tried a couple of times. Stop, stop. That's all what I want to know. I have an instant fear. She's, I have an instant fear. How did you, how did you get this fear right now? Because you're not driving, right? So how did you get this fear right now? I tried to learn it a couple of times. Right now. Right now. Can you get the fear? Right now. Right now, I'm not fearful because I'm not driving. Okay. Imagine you're driving right now. Imagine you're sitting on the driver's seat. Imagine yeah. that. You're driving. What's happening? This thing of what if, what if I bang into something? Perfect. What if I harm Perfect. someone? How did you learn that this is this this behavior? How did you learn this? Did someone tell you? Did you experience this in the past? Go back in time. Yes, yes, I yes. I have a memory of what yes. I learned in the past. Yes. I have a memory of what I learned in the past. I, I. Okay. Okay stop. Okay stop. Okay, okay, stop. okay, stop. Okay, stop. Okay, stop. Let's keep that memory outside. Okay. okay. And let's watch Lena with that fear. Watch Lena at that fear. There are two ways how you can see anything. One, I can see myself. How do I know this is true for me? Because I can see you and I know I'm sitting on this chair. And the second is I can see myself from your perspective. I can see myself from your perspective. And I can say, well, I'm sitting here and that's how I see myself, right? There are two ways of seeing any situation. One from my perspective and one from the environment's perspective. Lena, I want you to see Lena from, the, from my perspective. So become me and see Lena having the fear. Mm -hmm. Can you see Lena having the fear? Yeah. Huh? What do you feel when you see Lena having the fear? Not really physicality. Yeah, yeah. Say Lena is having the fear and you are looking at Lena. How do you feel from here? I can't see Lena's fear. Perfect. Now become Lena. Yeah. What happens to the fear? It's there. It's there. Simple. That means we can associate and dissociate. We can learn and unlearn. And that's that quick it can happen. What's the choice you want to make right now? Who you want to be right now? Do you want to be you in that memory state? Or do you want to be me in that state when you want to learn? Learning course, is always you. without understanding. Yeah. The moment you understand, you contaminate. The moment you understand, you contaminate because you're reaffirming the problem state over and over again. Now, the question is, if the, pro the solution is so simple, why are we not succeeding? Because you're not willing to let go of that narrative and story. And we constantly want to keep the memory alive because in that memory, somebody else is responsible. If you let go of that, then you are responsible. Because you want to constantly say, now this problem is because of my father, because of my mother, because of my brother. Because of that event, that is why my behavior is like this. Because you can fucking blame somebody in keeping the problem state alive. If you let go of that narrative, then you are responsible for your anger. You are responsible for your fear. You are responsible for snapping out. You are responsible for that response of yelling at someone. You are responsible for that. And because we are not willing to take responsibility, we have all these fucking words. I have this issue. I have that issue. I have OCD. I have abandonment. I have makiyak. I have dudh katel. I have all this. And psychology and the current social media age is not doing anything less for you to let go of that. And it's constantly reinforcing inner child healing, inner mother-in-law healing, inner all the... There is nothing inside. If yes then there is another problem. 
this is you and the only mm -hmm. you in the now and you can bring that change. Neurolinguistics is a model to build models. If your computer does not have an app, log on to the app store, download that app. The amount of time it takes to download is directly proportional to your hardware and the Wi-Fi. If you don't have a behavior, reach out to a person who has that behavior. We live in jet age. We have internet access. Find someone and cyber stalk them and model that behavior. NLP is about knowing that, well, I don't have it, but Anjan has it. How do I learn that from Anjan? And I'm going to look at Anjan and I'm going to see, well, he moves when he stands all the time. Well, he normally wears a black shirt. Well, he wears a specs. Well, that's how he does. He gets up in the morning. He has his juice. He, he goes for a run. He does this. He does this. What happens? What if I could do that? Will I be able to get a little of his output? And I may and I may not. But great. I can keep the journey on. And I will say, well, I'm looking at uh, Abhirami. And I'm saying, well, there is something in her which I like, and I would like to model that. I would like to buy that. Neurolinguistics is learning. It's constant learning. Learning how to smile in adversity, learning how to have that behavioral response, learning, learning behavioral response, so automatic that it becomes a part of your unconscious representation. The client is coming with an imaginary problem which they know and believe. They believe it at such a deep level that it's been hypnotized and affirmed right from childhood that, well, he's a talkative boy. He's a talkative boy. And teachers have done no less damage to that story. He's so hyper. And then at one point in time, we feel we got to be hyper. And that reality becomes our reality. Well, it's an imaginary problem. Would you agree with that? Our problem state is imaginary. It's not real. The, the, the leg of my chair is not broken. That's real. Well, I think I will fall if I sit on the chair. Now, that's imaginary. I think there's a monster under my bed. That's imaginary. I think there's something over here in the dark. Well, that's imaginary. The problem that the client brings is imaginary. They are coming with fiction. You make sure you give them another fiction. A good therapy, a good modeling is providing a better fiction to the fiction that they're bringing in. We all hold lies. And some of these lies are so good. Harry Potter is a beautiful lie. It's a good lie. And we keep our world intact with these lies of Santa Claus, of Jesus Christ, and whatever is your personal myth. That's what keeps your world intact. But... As much as these stories keep your world intact, there's another story you tell yourself, which is, I'm not enough. She dumped me. Or I don't think I can drive a car. I'm afraid of the dark. You're also telling yourself another lie. But we can change that. We can change that. That's the study of neurolinguistic. It's got a set of tools that can help anyone to resolve an existing behavior and embrace a new behavior in no time. At the heart of NLP, everything that we do is modeling. We are, we are modeling behavior. I'm learning Hindi, I'm learning English. And even after I learn Hindi, when I see someone speaking better than me, I try to model their vocabulary. Won't we take their vocabulary in today? Yeah. Won't we pick up their style, accent, diction? Yeah. We model, we constantly model. Dressing style, we model. And if we consciously model these things, well, we can model behaviors. Find out what behavior doesn't suit you today. What behaviors don't give you an outcome today. What behaviors are depleting you. What behaviors are consuming you. What behaviors are scaring the shit out of you in relationship. And then the question is not, what behavior should I replace it with? The question is, who has a behavior which I'd like to use in this situation? Who has a behavior which I'd like to use in this situation? And well, I can say, well, I think Joel handles this situation better than me. And I'm like, what is Joel doing here? How did he handle that situation better? To be curious, because when Lena saw Lena getting scared, Lena cannot get scared. 
when I'm bringing in curiosity to my information, I only have information, I don't have emotion. When I have information, I can bring changes, but emotion cripples me. Emotion pulls me down. It's not the breakup that's the problem, but my emotions and my negative self-talk associated with that is my problem. The financial loss is not my problem, but the belief that I incurred because of that financial loss with which I have a new reality now, which becomes a permanent constant, that is a problem. What if today we could look at all those realities as information minus emotion? Would we have a new experience now? No, I'm not saying not to be non-emotional. I'm saying be emotional, but you can choose to step out like Pushpa, sorry, like Lena. See that and then come back and live there. We've got choices. Neurolinguistic is choice and choice of possibility. Do I have a choice? Fucking yes. Do I execute it? No. Why don't I? Because I'm scared I'll piss off somebody. Because I'm scared that somebody will feel bad. Because I'm scared that somebody will leave me and go. How can I become big? Because what if they leave me and go? Well, I'm scared. I'm scared all the time that I lose people. And therefore, I choose to be small. What if this information is not true? Begin by challenging your belief system. By asking, what if that is not true? That's what Lena did, right? What if that's not true? Let me look at it from, from a different perspective. What if it is not true? And Lena said, I don't. You saw her hands? It went like this. I can't. She, she's like, are you stupid, Anil? I can't feel the fear. Kitna time laga to move from state A to state B. Now, Lena, go back and see yourself driving the car and tell me what you feel. Can you feel that fear which you felt before this class began? Or has that fear changed? So I can I can actually visualize me driving after what if after what I've heard you speak. Anna. But if you if you read the comment again, I think that making of right choice. That needs to be learned, right? It's not this much which will help me do what I want to do, but I'm unable to do or something which is stopping me from doing it. That I'm saying the client is coming with me with a fiction. I better have a better fiction for the client. I used one fiction to hold another fiction and now she has two fictions and she can choose which fiction to live today. And once you learn the other fiction, I'm thinking, how can anyone choose to go back there? Whether she drives the car or not, but whenever she says, I'm feeling afraid, she will laugh a little within because she knows I'm fucking fooling myself. Now she can say, I don't want to drive. That's a different story. But she can never be more afraid than this ever again because now she has two fiction. Parivartan that comes only after you make a choice and you make a choice when you feel disgusted with your reality when you are tired with your outcome as long as you are not tired as long as you are not in adversity you will continue to live there and you're not going to make that change. I hope this session made some sense to you. And forget NLP. Forget the tools of NLP. Forget everything. The question is, as human beings, we are capable of change without blaming our past. We are capable of change without blaming our abuser, without blaming our parents. We are capable of change without saying that, you know, why I am like this today? Because you are an asshole, period. It's not because of anybody. Yeah. Do you know why I get angry on relationship? Of course I know, because you get angry on relationship, period. That sentence can coexist just with yourself. It need not 
exist because something happened in the past. Why is it so difficult for us to just get that much information and we are capable of change? And NLP is just the tool. It's not the subject. The subject can be anything. It can be chemistry. How do you learn chemistry? See, NLP is only a set of tools. This is hai. With this, you can do plumbing and carpentry both. It's only a set of tools. The tools are useless. A fool with a tool. <laughs> It's still a fool. We need to use these tools. These are just tools. You can build anything with this. You can break things with the same tool. The hammer can be used to break a building. NLP is only a set of tools. It's useless if you don't apply that. Dr. Rajkumar. Hey, I just have limited time, okay? Four minutes. I to listen more uh, pertaining to how awareness permits allowance and acceptance. Yeah, that's the placebo. You're a doctor. So I can say that's the placebo. When I go to a doctor, I already know this doctor will heal me. It's in my head. And when I go to a doctor, I've already decided this doctor, I'm going to have painful medicines, bitter stuff and a longer relationship. It's placebo. You're a doctor. You can understand this better than me. Thank you, everybody.